There have been many heartbreaking scenes on Blue Bloods throughout the show's long run. The CBS series regularly demonstrates that it's about more than just making arrests, but the unexpected death of several characters. This is typical for the show. Danny Reagan and his team do, after all, look into murders. However, some deaths in the show hit fans harder than the rest. Let's go back in time and check out the saddest deaths in Blue Bloods the series. We start with Sonny Malevsky's suicide. Sonny Malevsky worked as a detective for the NYPD. He served with the 12th Precinct on the Warrant Squad, and Sonny was the leader of a criminal fraternization organization called the Blue Templar. After the Serpico and Knapp commissions were set up in the 1970s to look into corruption in the NYPD, it was created to police the police. The goal of the fraternal organization was completely abandoned when many of its original members quit, and the remaining members also became corrupt. The Blue Templar eventually became involved in many illegal activities. Blue Templar members would steal the proceeds from a drug bust and share the money. Joseph Reagan, the son of Francis Reagan, was assassinated by Malevsky while he was looking into the nefarious operations of the Blue Templar. In the episode titled The Blue Templar, Sonny, who is unaware he is being followed, leads the police to all the members of the fraternal group at the bar. Francis Reagan confronts the fraternity brothers as they are about to be jailed, demanding to know who killed his son, Joseph. Sonny admits killing Joe and then commits suicide. He was a crooked cop, but the suicide really hit hard. Next up is Michelle Martin's shot dead. Michelle Martin worked for the New York City Police Department as a police officer stationed in the 54th Precinct. She was killed while on the job. During her lunch break, Officer Martin can be seen standing in front of a nearby bank and taking a call on her cell phone. After she hangs up, she notices two people walking away from the bank, and one of them is carrying a shotgun. Officer Martin pulls her service weapon out of her holster and successfully shoots one of the bank robbers. However, despite shooting one of the bank robbers, she is shot by the the other one and later dies from her injuries. What makes her death sadder is Michelle's kid was only six years old and she was killed on the day of her wedding anniversary. Another one is Michael Potter's tragic death. Reverend Darnell Potter has been a notable activist who has been highly critical of the New York Police Department since the show's second season. Obviously, this causes tension between him and the Reagans. Nonetheless, a tragic tragedy in Potter's family forces him to put aside his disagreements in the episode Unbearable Loss. Michael Potter gets killed on the way home from high school. Danny Reagan learns the truth about it being a gang initiation ritual. The loss of Michael's young, promising life for no clear reason is heartbreaking enough on its own, and the dead child's image at the crime scene is more than upsetting. The tragic loss is compounded by the revelation that one of the ringleaders of the group that killed Michael was a former mentor of Reverend Potter. In this tragic turn of events, Potter has lost his son, but he doesn't lose him to an enemy he thought he would always put up his family in danger. Instead, he lost him to someone he had helped in the past. Frank Reagan tries to show sympathy for Potter as he tells him in a painful way that a corrupt cop killed his own son, Joe. In the episode, Unbearable Loss, it's heartbreaking not just because a family loses their son in a senseless manner, but also because it furthers the theme that the worst threat can often come from the unlikeliest of sources. We now move on to Vincent Cruz's heartbreaking loss. New York City police officer Vincent Cruz was known by his nickname, Vinny, and he was Jameson Reagan's second partner. He was a master of the art of flirtation and never missed a chance to create a good first impression and leave with a phone number. Vinny was a passionate person who often acted on his gut instinct. When he suspected a young boy of belonging to a gang under investigation for a drive-by shooting, he and Jamie initially butted heads. It ultimately paid off when the youngster was linked to the murder weapon. After the incident, Jamie decided to get some limits with Vinny, and Vinny accepted Jamie's rules without question. After that, things between them turned out much better, and Jamie reluctantly went along with Vinny's attempts to impress women while on duty. In the bitter end, violence between the NYPD and Lost Lords worsens. In the episode's last moments, Vinny and Officer Reagan make the deadly choice to pursue a suspect inside the Bitterman Apartments. The guy vanishes when Vinny and Officer Reagan follow him to Bitterman Housing Complex. While Officer Reagan tries to warn Vinny, both men get shot, Reagan in his bulletproof vest and Vinny in his neck. Sadly, Vinny dies from the neck wound he sustained. Don't go anywhere, as it's about to get even more intense. Next is when Javier Baez took a bullet for love. Javier Baez, also known as Tic Tac, was Maria Baez's, detective and Daniel Reagan's partner, older brother, and drug addict. Javier and Maria were estranged for several years. When they were kids, they were inseparable. When Javier developed a drug habit, their relationship changed. Maria severed ties with Javier, and his drug usage disrupted their family life in numerous ways. Maria and Javier never met again when he was a suspect in a murder case. When Maria and Reagan came to question him, he tried to run. They apprehended him and questioned him after he was arrested and sent to a holding cell. Javier said that he had stopped using drugs for three months during the interview. Javier responded to Detective Reagan's follow-up question by saying he worked 
as a CZE tech because of his computer proficiency. He was eventually cleared as a suspect. When a DEA shipment is stolen, Javier makes another appearance. Maria's heart breaks when she learns Javier has seemingly re resumed his drug use. During the interrogation, Javier admits that he joined the DEA as an informant so that Maria would once again be proud of him. It appears Javier's status as a confidential informant is jeopardized, so detectives Baez and Reagan uncover the mole and conduct a raid on the auto shop where the drug dealers are hiding out. During the raid, Maria Baez runs into Javier by accident. Javier puts himself between her and a shooter and dies to save Maria. Next up, in Addison's officer-on-officer -officer shooting. In the season 10 episode Fog of War, Danny and Baez work with the cowboy hat-wearing Texas Ranger, Waylon Gates, after the Lone Star Killer comes to New York, following a similar Case of the Week structure as other episodes of the series. But the episode is mostly about Eddie and her partner, Officer Addison, who get into a shooting, and during the exchange of gunfire, Addison shoots a woman he mistakes for a criminal. Later, he learns that she was an undercover cop. All of the employees at the office are affected by the death, when one of their own is killed while protecting the public. It is always a tragic event for the department. When one of their own shoots and kills a fellow cop, the pain becomes almost excruciating. Eddie gets into a fistfight in the precinct, and the sadness is so real that Frank has to step in and tell everyone how they should remember their deceased colleague. Later, Frank manages to talk Addison out of turning in his badge because of the incident. Another effect of the incident was that Internal Affairs looked into Jamie for being unable to super Supervise. The officer's death was felt deeply by many characters in the show. Finally, we got Linda's untimely death at number one. Unexpected deaths of important characters in television shows are always sad for fans, and when the circumstances of death don't feel right, it's even worse. Linda Reagan, the wife of Detective Danny Reagan on the CBS police drama Blue Bloods, died after seven seasons. The circumstances surrounding her death were, at best, unsatisfactory to the show's many fans. The first episode of season eight revealed that Linda had passed away in a crash involving a medical evacuation helicopter helicopter, even though it doesn't exactly reveal what happened. It takes some time before the episode reveals that the character had passed away, and it does so gradually through therapy sessions with Linda's husband, Danny Reagan. During their session together, Danny and his therapist have been talking about the loss of his wife, and now Danny is considering whether or not he should retire from the police force. And the therapy sessions prompted the fans increased empathy for Danny and his predicament. Losing Linda is a big deal for the show. It completely alters the trajectory of Danny's character development as he is forced to go through the stages of grieving and figure out how to function within his law enforcement family. The death of Linda was unanticipated and unquestionably one of the most devastating incidents that have ever occurred on the show to this point. And that's it, the most devastating deaths in the show's history. What do you think? Which death was the saddest in your opinion? Did we miss any important deaths? Let us know in the comment section down below. See you guys soon.